It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. <laughs> Yep, Charlemagne the God. Uh, Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this episode of the Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Freeze Pipe. All right? The worst part about smoking weed is actually smoking it. The smoke comes out hot, it burns your throat, and causes coughing exorcisms, and we all know the only thing that beats fire is ice. Introducing Freeze Pipe, makers of a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, dab rigs, and more. If you can smoke from it, Freeze Pipe makes it, all right? The reason this small American-owned company has doubled in growth every year is because they're dedicated to customer satisfaction and building the smoothest hitting pieces possible. When smoke passes through these frozen glycerin chambers, it's instantly cooled by hundreds of degrees for a bigger, smoother hit. Pop one of these glycerin chambers in the freezer for one hour, and the results will change how you smoke. It's like putting ice in your bong if that ice played baseball in the 90s and bought supplements of hose and bought supplements off Jose Canseco. So visit thefreezepipe.com and see for yourself why the internet can't stop talking about freeze pipe. Your throat and lungs will thank you. Use code IDIOTS and save 15% off your first order. Visit thefreezepipe.com and use promo code IDIOTS to save 15% off your first order. Now let's start the show. There goes up, Wax. Everybody? Wax blowing that smoke from a freeze pipe right now. Yeah. Um, a cold dick. Yeah. Whoa. Hezzy, one more year. Whoa. Well, I mean, one more week. Yeah, one more <laughs> year. One more one, week, bro. One more week until you enter the cold dick category. <laughs> Let's <Yeah>. go. <laughs> Giving her that freeze pipe. Put that dick on ice, baby. Yeah, baby. Right. Right. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Put I that dick on the rocks. I can't right wait. Freezer. I'm done no, fucking. It's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I'm, done I'm done. Your boy's out the game. Nah, it's that, a beautiful thing, that, man. That I'm happy man. for you. Thank you, bro. Congratulations, man. How you I'm feeling? excited. How you feeling? I'm excited, man. I'm I'm yeah. I'm really excited. I was telling him before the podcast started, like, just the idea of, of having all the people, all the most interesting, smart, fascinating, funny people I've collected in 38 years of life, having them all in the same place at oh. one time. That is really exciting for me. You know, and realize, and having and them all awkward, meet each other, like and realize how awkward we all really are, and how we're yeah, all going to be. <laughs> you around awkward people, like the people I collect ain't normal. I don't think I got a single normal friend. You know what I mean? Probably like, me. <laughs> the more awkward you are, the more easy it makes it for them. It's going to be one table where all the conversation is at, and then everybody else is going to be sitting around drinking, having a good time. You know, celebrating. Happy to all be right. there. Happy to be there, but can't wait to leave. We'll see. We'll see. It's it's our job to make it fun because I don't like, I've told you about this probably, like I don't like uh, forced attention. I hate like, it. I don't like yeah, birthdays. No, I don't like, me. I don't yeah. like attention, which it feels like unwarranted. Like, yes. you know, I don't want you to celebrate me, but if I'm on stage and I'm giving you something to laugh at, you could laugh and enjoy that. And now I feel like it's even the exchange. Like I'm giving you something to celebrate. Jeez. So like birthdays and shit, I'm like, why are we celebrating me? I ain't doing nothing to be here. You know, like, you're here. We're celebrating you because you're here on your birthday. Yeah. You That's last another day. I, I, That's I understand huge. that, but that now I realize that like sometimes celebrations and like holidays are situated so that you can share how you feel about your boy in a comfortable environment. Like walking up to your boy on a Wednesday and be like, "Yo, bro, I love you and I'm proud of you." That that might throw that dude off. You know, <laughs> like, you know what do you mean, bro? Why are you telling me this on a yeah, Wednesday? Yeah. Right? Like, Am I about to die? What's happening? Am I yeah, dying? You good? dying? What's going on? That's you know something, something I don't know, <laughs> right? But like, I guess a wedding is one of those times where you can share those feelings and it feels like appropriate, etc. So for that, I, it's just I don't know. I'm really honored that these people will come, man. I'm I'm, I'm honored. I'm, honored I'm happy you guys to be there. Come. I can't yeah. wait to be there. Yeah. I can't wait to celebrate you. I can't wait to celebrate. You know your 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 your. It's called it's nuptials, right? Uh, yeah, sure. I don't know <laughs> what is it, man. For real, what's the word? Yeah, for it, man? You, got, you about to get your know. nuts cut off or something? <laughs> no, Say man. What? It is nuptials. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, so you, you gotta get your nuts cut off when you get married. Is, that's yeah, why you gotta yeah. stick to words that you just know. I can't wait to celebrate your wedding show. That's I can't what's wait up, man. Uh, wedding, okay. wedding, you union. gotta impress me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I know who you are, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, one question I keep getting is why L.A.? Because uh, one thing, one thing that you should be proud of, Schultz. Yeah, people, you're synonymous with New York City. Yeah, 
No, like, like, like you're, you're a quintessential, here I go using a word I might be using right and don't know. You're a quintessential New York City comedian, which I think is a great space to be in. Honored. Mm -hmm. I think it's rare air. Cause like some of these guys, they're from New York, but they've been in Cali for so long, or they from someplace and been in Cali for so long that they don't. They don't, it's, it's something different when they say New York City comedian. So you're synonymous with New York City. So why L.A.? As you know, you've been married for a while. Uh, you know, uh, we don't make any of these decisions. True indeed. Okay. So no, about right. my, my girl is from Santa Barbara. Oh. Yes. Yes. So my girl is from Santa Barbara. And uh, the place where we're doing it is this uh, new, uh, just a home her like us that father and mother just built this crazy new place so we're gonna be like the first ones in there for it so it's gonna be uh it's just pretty cool all these things work i actually went to college in santa barbara yeah yeah so there's i guess a little bit of it for me but it's really just that's where her family's from wow And it's also winter it's like i'm not trying to have like an outdoor winter wedding in new york and i didn't really want to go to like a ballroom or something or like do it at the hotel so I was like, fuck it. Let's just go out here. Let's just do this shit in Santa Barbara and it'll be beautiful. Nah, it's beautiful. And her family, her family can get there easily. And yeah. like the, the friends that you really fuck with and really fuck with you will make the flight. Exactly. Yeah. And I didn't really invite my, uh, many of my family. I don't blame you. I didn't invite much of my family to my place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, come on now. On what? Got we got to share more than a name. I, you ain't got to listen. You ain't preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> right. A lot is going on. A lot is going on. The word is born. People be yeah. like, blood is thicker than water. That shit is sounds it? stupid. Is yeah. it though? <laughs> How much water? Hey, blood may be thicker than water, but guess what I need to survive? Water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, no. so that's how I feel. So I'm not mad at you. I get it. I feel like, I, 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 I don't it. know. I feel like my friends are my family. Mm-hmm. You know? Th- they are. And, and I do have family members there, family members that I'm close to and all that kind of stuff. But like, I didn't grow up in a family that was very religious. And I didn't grow up in a family that's very traditional. So like, I don't have to adhere to those two things when it comes to the wedding. My folks are just like, yo, do what makes you happy. Like, it is what it is. And so for for me, I oh, I understand if like your wedding is tied into religion, you got to have your cousins there, your whole family, et cetera. Like my boy mm-hmm. Dove is Moroccan Jew. Like, he got to have every cousin, second cousin. It ain't even for him, yeah. the wedding. Yeah. Like, the wedding mm-hmm. was for his family. That's what Chris was telling me before this. We started recording. He was like, I was like, give me some advice about the wedding. He was like, it's not for you. It's for the family. Ain't nothing to do with you. Yeah. No, nah, I, I think that's bad advice. I, I get what Chris is saying. I felt that way, too. And I, I think I've told you this before. I felt that way up until the weekend of the wedding. And then right. I had a fucking ball. I had yeah, a yours ball was fun. at the wedding. Yeah, you yours was fun, fun, but it's still not for you. It's yeah. I I mean it's for both of us. I had a I had a blast. Like I actually can't wait until, you know, we make like 10 years of marriage so I can like do it again. Run it yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I I'm definitely having another wedding. I'm definitely yeah, renewing my vows. Twice? That's a hundred percent. I'm definitely renewing my vows. A hundred percent. Yeah. I yeah. definitely actually, want to do it again. I used to think, man, I, I used to think that was corny. Like, I actually used to, like, hate weddings, like, going to people's weddings. I didn't really understand it. And then, like, having mine and then seeing the people that are making this effort to go, it's not like this shit is down the block. Like, you got to fly to California, you go to Santa Barbara, like, that, that, I don't know, it was really, like, touching. I was like, oh, my God, man, that's, that's a beautiful thing that you're going to do all that because I love someone else. You know what I mean? We're not even yeah. doing it to celebrate you and me. We're doing it me lo- loving someone else. So now I'm like, man, if I, I will probably do anything I can to come to somebody's wedding after this experience. Because it does kind of hurt if one of your friends you really care about can't make it. You know? Nah, you can't. You got to go to a wedding. You got to. I, I didn't you gotta realize go it. To you you ain't got to go to a funeral, but you got to go to a wedding. I'm not going to none yeah. of y'all funerals. Yeah, like yeah, y'all know yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, I, yeah, I just try yeah. to bake that and let you know. You nah, know I'm, I'm not going to my funeral if I can help it. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to none of y'all funerals. I'm letting y'all know that right now. You're not going to go to your funeral? Nah. Nah, you're going to skip go it. You're going to skip your funeral. <laughs> I'm trying to yep. skip mine too. <laughs> let me know where you hide that because I'm going to go yeah, right there too. Yeah. <laughs> what, what you going to do instead? What you going to do instead of die? I'm going to be in heaven. 
By the way, we all yeah. skip our own funerals. Yeah, None that's of us are true. technically, yeah, none that's of us are technically <laughs> at our funerals. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Like that's why they call it the remains. All right. <laughs> where, where, you think, where you think we go though? We gotta go. We probably uh, in the church I, though. I we probably know, see. I don't know where we go, but I know we ain't at no funeral. By that's the way, funny. If, if if you if you enter the pearly gates, right or whatever, yeah. whatever it is after this, and then yeah. like, and you can go back and watch your funeral if you want to. Nah, Did you really want to see that? Nah, nah I, I gotta did. see who's shedding a tear, yo. I gotta see who's playing video games on their phone. Or who's trying to holler at my like, girl. That's yeah. what you're trying to see. Yeah, who's consoling my girl. Like, yeah. I gotta see all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Nah, hey, it's gonna be okay, okay, by the babe. way, what if that's the ultimate test to see where you go? Like, you pass away, Damn. and then you're, like, in this waiting room, and then you go to your funeral, and you got an opportunity. Like, you see somebody hollering at your girl, and you got the opportunity to possess that person right then and there and make them do in something the crazy. Make One them kill time. yourself. Make them no. have a heart attack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. I don't know if I want that. I don't want that kind of power, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, but what if you go to hell if you fuck with them? If you just turn the cheek like God say, you go to heaven. You'll fuck that up. Fuck her. I'm yeah. out. I'm going to heaven, baby. Oh, that was, so you're saying it's God testing you. It's mm-hmm. God seeing what you would do with those powers. But if someone's trying to fuck my, my wife right after I died, bro, that's crazy. Especially it's like uh, a motherfucker trying to fuck your girl while you alive. Yeah, yeah but that's different. The, I can do something open. about it. If a guy's trying to smash your girl right after you pass, that means he already has or he's or been flirting. Been trying to do something. Word up. Yeah. He's, he's, he's sending heart eyes under the, the text message and fucking DMs and shit. Yeah, that's a little crazy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a little crazy. You'll never see that crazy. from Wax. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Hard eyes. I don't give a fuck it was anything. Yeah. The wax funeral gonna be full of uh, airport security, boy. Airport security out, loves. They love wax. Wax. Oh <laughs> my god! His his funeral will be full of airport security, and his wedding will be full of airport security. People standing up protesting. Does anybody Listen. disagree with this marriage? I do. Yo, it's it's Charlamagne. I don't think Charlamagne should go first when we go through air uh, security. Because I think he'd be telling these motherfuckers, really check him. He got something. Something. Because no way they let everybody go by and they get me every fucking time. No, nope, it's Did the outfit you, have you something? be wearing. There ain't no fucking outfits. I ain't got it's nothing on. They don't like my shit. You it's know how many people come wearing. through with jewels and all these chains? And they look nope. more sexier than me. It's them, it's them, it's the medium <laughs> t-shirt and you should be wearing double X. No, I'm it's chilling, size man. 32 I'm chilling. cargoes when you should be wearing yeah, yeah. 38. No, no, You be bro. coming through that showing shape. I had a jacket shape. on. <laughs> no, you had on a little small hoodie, a little fitted hoodie. That's by not the way, bullshit. By the way, we saw our guy, Donnell Rollins, yesterday and we spoke about Please. this. Because, you know, I, didn't, I, I, I lost like 10 pounds to get down to 170 because that's where I like to be. Oh, and shit. Okay. So I, can, so I can wear a medium hoodie now. Yeah, I'm too and I saw Donnell. Oh, Donnell looked good. I saw Donnell yesterday. Donnell looked good. Please. I don't know what Donnell doing, but he looked good. I and, thought it was the hoodie. That's what he said. He was like, nah, it's the hoodie. It's the way this hoodie fit. <laughs> and I was like, yo, you right. It's something about these medium hoodies that when you put them on, they fit a certain way. Yeah. That's why. Well, I ain't find it yet. I ain't find a motherfucking one to fit I don't know. Me, I don't know. What? I don't know if a man can get a medium something. Well, that's wax. Tell what him. What are you talking about? I got no medium at, look shit. Look at his shirt right now. So, so you feel kind of comfortable shirt? wax just ordering a you medium? You think I got a fucking medium? I don't even order my shit. You ask my shorty. She'll tell you the truth. She'll tell okay, you what size, size you got. What you mean what size I got? What size right now? is that? Yeah. It's a large. All right. Do you think wax wears a large, Andrew? Why not? I, honestly, I'm an athlete built. I'm not like no fucking bulky ass motherfucker. It doesn't look like you wear a large. I mean, how much do you weigh? Wax, how much do you weigh? I'm only 244. Oh, I thought he fought wearing a large. I thought you were. <laughs> 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 this motherfucker is 244 pounds wearing a large t shirt and oh. size 32 cargo. That's not and, 32. I wonder why they feeling it's the point of airport security. Yeah, what are you talking dude. about? You, you are slut. asking for it. You're a no, slut. No, they, they do it too much, slut. though. They do too much. I'm you telling know, you. You're a slut, bro. No, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> really, you gotta really acknowledge that that you're a, you're a real host. No, you are no. the airport you like are. a thought. You are. Nah, brother, he did me kind of dirty though. You it's like do, I, you it's dirty. something I did today, <laughs> huh? It was, it's, it's airport security. They sit there and was like, "All right, he, you know what he said that ringed off? My phone ringed off. It had an alarm." Tell him what you were wearing yesterday. You talking about what I was wearing? Tell him what you were wearing. What do you mean? I had a jacket on. I had a black tee. Oh, I had black. No, you cargo. didn't. You had a hoodie on. 
with a, 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 a large hoodie with a large T. Size <laughs> a large hoodie. Cargos. What are you talking about? I, how do you have a large hoodie? I can't fit a large hoodie. Can I ask you them. a serious question? When you look at your outfits, uh, do you feel cute? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you feel? Like, when you put yeah, together I promise the outfits, you, I don't even know. Whatever's in the drawer, I just grab. And you never Whatever thought, Carla put there. But even before Carla, did you ever think, like, okay, this fits like this. Maybe I should just go one size bigger, and then it will fit different. I did all different. that, man. And just, see, the way my body is filled, is my traps is up here. So if I put anything else on, it make it seem like I'm, I'm a, I weigh like 300 pounds. Oh, you look I, fat. No, I yes, figured like, it out. My, figured my it out. back is like a 300 pounder, but my waist is like a... So if you wear baggy clothes, somebody, it looks fat. But if you wear it skinny like a, clothes, it like a you cake look muscular. muscular. Oh, all, shit. All, no, all the years of football, Wax wants all his clothes to feel like Under Armour. Like, he wants no. everything <laughs> to feel like dry fit. Yeah. He needs yeah. everything to feel like dry fit. That's what yeah. it is. That ain't got nothing to do with it. So, sit, sit there, so if a girl sit there and wear whatever the fuck she want to wear, all their clothes tighter than me, they get to do that to her? Now nah, that's debatable. I think your clothes are way tighter than ninety no, percent of the women I know. There's no way possible. What you Absolutely. Know? I'm gonna ask you a question about that. Like, shouldn't we pit? You know how they like pat you down? Like, and a dude got to pat down a dude, and a girl got to pat down a girl, right? Yeah. Like a dude can't pat down a girl, and a girl can't pat down a dude. Shouldn't Jeez. that be done based on sexual attraction, not gender? Nah, because you can lie about sexual attraction. You can lie about gender. Uh, to a certain extent, I guess. Yeah, yeah. you could. I'm I mean, if you're, trying, if you're trying to get away with something, yeah. So, because if there's a dude, because like, what the idea is, what that it could be uncomfortable for you for someone who could potentially be sexually attracted to you to rub your body, right? I, yeah, I, something happened. What you mean? Something had to happen because my phone shouldn't have went off. Why is my phone having an alarm? Why does your phone what? have an alarm? Phones, phones <laughs> yeah. have, have alarms in case Listen, you need. He, to he asked me. He, he said. He said, "Where's your luggage?" I said, "I don't have no luggage." I said, I just "Well, came that's for weird." The day. Why would you well, not have any that, luggage? That you going the, on a flight? Like, that sounds that like you going to blow answer. up a flight. Listen, we, I, I came for a day. But, but wax, that's not the truth. You checked your luggage. Well, yeah, but Whatever. if you say I don't have Again, luggage, you want to tell on me? Flight? But you want to tell on me? Why would you tell me you ain't got no luggage? But who cares? I ain't got no luggage with me right now. Can I ask you a question, wax? If a dude behind you was brown <laughs> and he said, I don't have any luggage today. Would you be a little suspicious? <laughs> would you be like, why don't you no. got plans when you land? Why is there Bro, nothing I that you're going to do? I came in and out. I came in and out. Why is my phone thinking off there? Why, why does had a luggage why claim does have ticket? Alarm? Why does it have alarm though? Like, you had a luggage claim ticket. No, I didn't. Yes, I mean, he didn't do. see all... nothing. He yes, didn't they see do. anything. They, all, they always give you the luggage claim ticket. That's why he asked you where your luggage is. I was understand at. that. No, everything was inside my jacket pocket. He didn't see anything. Whatever came through, he grabbed my phone so your phone will off your phone. Nah, alarm. nah, let's talk about what he really grabbed. He grabbed that meat. <laughs> right. Man, is that true? Let dude? me tell you something. Wax was so hurt that I said, I wasn't Wax, hurt. Listen, Wax was so upset that I said, Show me on this doll where he touched you. <laughs> that, that's how uh, bad it was. I, I'm going to tell you this right now. For Charlemagne to know every fucking procedure he did, and this never happened to Charlemagne, what happened, yo? Was you, was you, you just love watching? What, what, did he t- what did he tell you to do, Wax? Tell me yo, what, you tell wasn't me there. Listen, so, how, how you know? Listen, he, made, he made Wax do a lunge. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. So you was watching me? <laughs> That's crazy. So he That's had crazy. him in the lunge position. Now, listen. I don't believe it. After he gets him in the lunge position and Wax is holding the lunge, he goes, do you want to go in the back? <laughs> I said, Whoa. no, I'm not going in the back. <laughs> no, but that's, that's something they're supposed to ask you. He's supposed to say you want to do it here or you want to do it in the back. And, and the yo, I'm like, no, you're hey, doing it right yo. here. <laughs> you don't want to do it in the back, bro? <laughs> no, I'm not doing it in the back. That's no. right. That's right. You take it in the mouth. All right, like listen, a real you, you don't think you don't think how many times you, you know how many no times they, they sit there and got me? Every time we go out of out of the country, they get me. Every time I go to TSA <laughs> now, lately it's just been out of fucking control. They grab me every fucking time. And I'm like, do what you gotta do, bro. And they say, Stop dressing I, like I a slut. You. Yeah, you do do that. And now you're doing Stop splits? Like a slut. Yo, why did you do a split when he asked for a lunge? Why'd you go all the way down? Because he, he didn't told have me to. my fucking legs, man. I was bad as a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm now I'm turning around like, is this nigga taping this shit? And I'm looking at the guy, I'm like, yo, this some bullshit, yo. I complained the whole fucking time. I, I pissed the fuck off. I said, I must have did something. 
Did I do something, Lord? I'm asking the Lord to forgive me right now on here, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me for my. Did sins. he really touch your penis, dude? Listen, hold on. When Wax said, when Wax goes, I must have <laughs> oh, did no. something. The dude is grabbing his thigh while he's in the lunch position. He going, "Yes, you did do something. No, I did I not. You did something. Some shit. No, you are like, doing yeah. something to me right now. No. <laughs> Yo, this was this is unfair. I don't. I don't think this was right. I know that if if this happened to a female, she report. But I. But I know. <laughs> But, but I know if I report with you. No, I I know if I report that I can't fly, they take me on a no fly zone. They they sit there and have me and him have an investigation. I would have to sit there that rest of that day. So I gotta let the nigga do the shit. That's fucked up. Now yeah, you he, can report now. He did say that too. Wax was like, yo, if I he said that he got to the gate, he goes, What happened to me just now was not right. That ain't cool, bro. <laughs> he said that. If I was a woman, I could report him. I think you could report him now if you wanted to. Then stay here. I'm going to be here. So you're saying you would rather be fondled than be late? Yep. (laughs) Right now. I ain't have no choice. I got to get home. I got to get home. If you got to fondle me right now, which is not cool. I mean, it's not cool. That's That's why I don't like the motherfuckers. So you can't complain then. You can't that's that's no, 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 man. If any, this happened to anybody else, man. He actually man, was priority shows. Pri- priority, <laughs> Mosaic. He was... I was everything. I'm fucking what everything. What airline were you flying? I don't even think it got, this, it got anything to do with the airline. What airline? Uh, JetBlue. JetBlue, that's all. Oh, that's yeah, JetBlue. We, we fly, we fly with JetBlue all the time. It's not JetBlue. JetBlue show us all love. It's the motherfucking TSA motherfuckers. Like, y'all gotta make sure y'all know what's going on. And mm-hmm. I asked him, I said, y'all have no better procedure than this, y'all? Like, where the fucking wand shit at? If I ain't got no fucking knife on me, what the fuck is up? And then he grabbed his meat and said, this is where the wand is at. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. I made him turn his hands back around, though, because he was like this. And I'm like, yo, bro, you're not supposed to do that shit, bro. Everybody do this shit and yeah. go like this. Damn, you know so what I'm saying? Got, so he got to rub your ass with both sides no, of the No, he was like this. No, he was like this. You wanted that shit like, twice. Bro, that's not cool. You're supposed to be like that, fam. I like you telling him. I like you giving him direction, man. A man should know what he wants from another man. Yeah, I just think that's not cool. And if y'all seen that happen, I don't think that's y'all seen, somebody need to report that shit. I think you. Rogan, yeah. I can't report it. They're gonna take me on a no fly zone. I'll be fucked up. No fly list, it, bro. It's not a zone. Whatever it's it a, is, it's a list. No fly fucking zone. No <laughs> fly list. <laughs> the fucking no fly zone. Come on, bro. <laughs> well, I ain't got time for that shit, man. I got that's, all, that's basically my life. That's all I do is fucking fly, bro. Yeah. Well, guess what? If they got, as long as you're on investigation, you cannot fly. You're not putting me in no investigation. Fuck you. Well, one thing I learned about Brandy is, listen, is you never know who our listeners are. So when we, when we fly out next week for Schultz's wedding, you just gave one of these TSA agents <laughs> no. consent Can I tell to you grab something? dad meat again. No, they back, we, back from guide code, it started. The TSA love guide code, love girl code. That was their favorite fucking show. And brilliant, it is guaranteed TSA fucks with heavy the brilliant idiot, so you're gonna have to go through hell. I, and I hope that they put you through it, bro. No, no, no. I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna find some real dudes like your wax. You know what? I'm gonna let you come through respect. It, it is some dope people out there. You know what I'm saying? That always show love. Yo, wax was good. Come through. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Bring us all the way through. But it's got some guys that I don't know what the fuck is going on. That wasn't cool. TSA what about that guy that hit you? you? What about that guy that hit you with that trick question that time? And he goes, "Do you want to go in the back or do you want to go in the back?" Ooh. No, he didn't. He said, you want to go in the back? And I said, no. I'm not going back there with you. Why not? What do you think would happen <laughs> Because I, there? I went back there. Listen, one time I went back there. I'm thinking, yeah. you know, you get VIP treatment. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Probably know somebody in there, whatever. Yeah. That's the champagne room. It is the champagne no. room of the airport. Oh, with the champagne room, all right. Them motherfuckers so, take everything. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm going back out there, bro. Whoever in there, they need to go ahead and check inside of that motherfucking place. And you don't sure want the flight to be safe? You don't think it's worth it if they just touch you, if the flight is safe? I Just don't put me on a no-fly zone, bro. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to get molested, but just don't put me on that shit. You're that too old disgusting. for being molested, bro. You just got assaulted. I got assaulted. And yeah. I think that guy should not have been open, able to open his hands like this. You got to be like this, bro. He was just doing his job. Time. Did wow. he go between your cheeks at all and separate them? Nah, it wasn't nothing like that. He can't. I got pants on. 
Not really. Yeah. <laughs> what you mean? Not you really. had on leggings, bro. Them yeah. calls on leggings, bro. <laughs> yeah. You got to wear bigger pants. I get you. Yo, know I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of deadlifts, so you don't I, know I, I just might have to change it. I don't, don't know, know my size. Sizes. I really don't. You really don't know your size. I really yo. don't. I promise you, I don't. You don't know your size. My drawers right now either. I don't even know my draw size. I don't know shit. You're not a large. I know that much. And you're not a size 32 in pants. 38. Not if you're you 244 pounds. And how tall are you? 5'11". Five five eight. Eight. Man, sh knock it off. <laughs> nah. <laughs> what do you wax? 5'11"? 5'10"? 6'2 and a half. Yo, three. calling a dude that's over six feet, 5'11", is the most insulting thing that you can nah, say. Nah, we, we don't give a fuck because we know that's not what nah, it is. Nah, we do. Especially if you just barely. Like, if you're a six foot tall dude and you're like, what do you like, 5'11"? Drive him crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Drive him crazy. Well, listen, crazy. You, listen, you, 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 you got to have something else with it. Like, they, like they can say that, but you, you got to be able to slam them. Can you slam them? What do you mean? If you can slam them, they wouldn't even talk like that to you. They always look at you as you bigger than them anyway. Now, I, now, some them little five eight dudes will slam your ass. Now. They will slam. Yeah. They get up on you. Right they up wrestlers. You. They get That's you. Right. Them the yeah. ones you don't want to play with. I ain't gonna That's lie. Right. The Roy the Jones Juniors ears with those ears that are all puffy and shit. I'm not doing it. They'll get right up under you. Okay, yeah. what did we what did we see this uh what did we see this week that made us say positively brilliant or what a fucking idiot? Anything? Yo, one of these weeks I'm gonna come prepare for that question, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's just a general question. Just what did you see this week? That was positively brilliant. And what I made was you what, say, what a fucking idiot. What a fucking you idiot. You ain't been paying attention to shit. Yeah, I know. But what a fucking idiot. Definitely Alec Baldwin. I didn't see the interview. But the fact that he did one, it's like, we all know you didn't do it on purpose, stupid. And now you out here saying that, now you out here saying you didn't do it on purpose. And I'm like, I think you did. <laughs> no, I think yeah, you and anything that, that you say could be used against you. You got to know how to shut the fuck up. I yeah, don't know nothing. Yeah, like nobody thought you actually went on set nothing. to shoot that woman. But the fact that you out here screaming on the top of your lungs, putting out interviews, like got crazy music in the background, like okay, something's fishy right here. Something is yeah. fishy. Yeah, I don't understand why he felt the need to uh, have a conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like we, we clearly know. It was an accident. Um, nobody saying otherwise. Nobody yeah. other than you know, other than his political enemies, which which is weird that he has political enemies because he's not a politician. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And even but, they don't say he did it on purpose. They don't blame him. Yeah, they saying they just, he did it? They're just Trump. fucking with him. Oh, word? Yeah, he said he did it on purpose. Oh, Trump said he did it on purpose? Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump that. did say that. Trump did say yeah, that. Trump yeah, did say that's that. Funny. Oh, that's other than that. Trump's the that yeah. That's why I said other than his political uh, enemies, nobody's, nobody's saying that. But but these days you got to please everybody, though. You know what I'm saying? So if he did, if he didn't, you know what I'm saying? Somebody, they'll still be on his ass. I don't think you have to please everybody. And that's the point. These it's days. like, yo, the truth has to be enough for you. Mm. We all got to get back to so that why, as a why society. Think, why do you think people do interviews and stuff, though? They got to try to, like, somebody got to get pleased off that. They, they, I know the they case, don't want to do it. In the case of Alec Baldwin, I don't know. Maybe he yeah. just felt like he wanted to, you know, tell his side of the story. But hey, put it in a book. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We don't, we don't, we don't need it right now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I can understand somebody like, I can understand like somebody, I can understand somebody like Travis Scott having a conversation. You mm. know what I'm saying? You know, that's a little, that's different. But yeah. Alec Baldwin, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like Alec, we don't even know the movie that was coming out. It's not like it was a, uh, an anticipated film. You know what I yeah. mean? I mean, I, maybe it was. I don't know. But like in the case of a Travis Scott, he was performing in front of a bunch of his, you know, his fans and his fans are invested in him in a different way. So they would want to hear from him. You yeah. know what I mean? On, on, yeah. on the situation. But Alec Baldwin, no. You know For what's what? weird? Uh, nobody seems to be keep it, like holding the fans that stepped on another human being to go listen to Travis Scott closer accountable for what happened. Like, if you ask me, I don't, that's not on Travis Scott. Like, you're a person, you saw another person, you pushed them out the way and then stepped on them. Yeah. That's fucked up. Is that not well, fucked up, yo? But 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 in that type of situation, if you don't push and keep going, you're gonna be the one falling. And guess what's not about to happen? There, to you? but like, what about like helping somebody? What about no, you respect, know, telling people then, stop? Then you gonna get trampled. You ever seen, bro? You know how people, how many people that is. Well, I'm there, saying, no, bro, no, there, like, there, there, there that's is a there, lot, there, bro. One of the, one of the people who died actually died um, trying to help his fiance. So wow. there, there is something to what Wax is saying. You know, what I mean, it's just sad. Stampede like, I was, ain't no joke, bro. 
Yeah, it's 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 just sad, you know. Even even with the young the young kid who got killed, um, I think he was nine years old. It's because his he was on his father's shoulders, and his father passed out because it was so much pushing and everything that like they were literally oh, they were literally man. drowning in people. Basically, oh my god! So it was other people drowning in people, and so that his father passed out, and that's how the kid, you know, fell. But to your point, I don't see how you see a nine year old kid fall and nobody you know yeah. tries that's to what help. I'm saying but, like yeah you know, we got to hold these people accountable a little bit too like I I, I agree goofy. with you you can't control human behavior but I will say um you know I don't judge people when they're in survival mode and that that's what it sounded like yeah a lot of, right. a lot a lot of that in that crowd that's what it sounded like people yeah. were just trying to clearly they were just trying to survive and you know they were trying to survive because some people actually died yeah. so you know I yeah, get it though true. that's why I said man <laughs> I thought about this the other day. When it comes to any of these things, when it comes to these large crowds, whether it's festivals, whether it's sporting events, man, whether it's just a bunch of us at the airport, you know the one thing that we're all relying on to stay safe? Here. No. What? Each other? Human behavior. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Human behavior. That's all we're relying on to stay yeah. safe. It's true. And you know, you gotta, that, for me, a person who suffers from you know, bad anxiety. That's why I don't like crowds. Yeah. yeah. Because anxiety makes you want to control everything. And things that seem out of your control cause you hella yeah. anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, and, the effectiveness of like, of, uh, of terrorism. Really. When you think about it is like all of our rules and laws are based on the principle that we all want to survive and we want to avoid chaos. So when mm -hmm. we say like line up, to go get your ticket or line up to pay for something at the grocery store, right? It's like you have a much better chance of having an easy day if everybody just lines up. But if everybody just runs to cash register and fights each other to pay for their groceries, oh. whatever, then you have a much worse chance of staying alive Water. that day. Yeah, and Water. so 100%, like we're all, we're all obeying these rules because it makes life easier. And once we stop obeying these rules, we put ourselves in a position where we could easily be killed. Yeah, Easy. I 100% agree. Yeah, sure. I 100% agree. Yeah, there's like a social contract. And once that social contract is broken, it turns into the animal kingdom out here, bro. That's why I don't like large crowds, especially, you know, large crowds of kids. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll ask any party promoter in the world. Uh, let's just stick to America. There's a reason people don't like to do team parties, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, there's, there, there's a reason, like, back in the day when I used to throw parties, they wouldn't let you have Teen parties at certain venues. Mm. You know what I mean? Too out of because control. the liability was too crazy. Why? Liability because they just act crazy. up. They do. They just they act just up, do bro. Too much. A lot. They just act up. They just act up, man. These kids is different. Yeah, they yeah. finally Lies. they finally get to get out the house. They've been held in so long, and they just finally getting off the porches. Like ah. And 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 not only that. Think about it. If what we're saying is true, which I believe it is, even though this is just a brilliant idiot's observations. Hey. If we're all relying on human behavior, you're really talking to a, a demographic of people who don't know how to quite behave yet. Not mm. all of them. They're kids. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're they not dealing with the same level of emotional intelligence or maturity that, you know, a group of adults were, a, adults yeah. would be. You know yeah, what I mean? 15 hours yeah. out of control. Right now, way better. Yeah. De debatable. I'm just saying. Debatable. That's why I said way better. I ain't say, you know, what did y'all probably say? Say way better. What did you uh what did you think this week, man? What was who was a fucking idiot? Who was positively brilliant? Um school shooter. Out of control. Which school shooter? Which one? The Michigan, the one that obviously. They they show the, I hate when you always have a you get a bunch of fucking uh signs and you just ignore it. And you know what time oh, it is. Yeah. It's like Oh, yeah, that's why they, that's why they came this. for the parents too. We lost video. Oh, this time they did. Oh, uh, it's back. Yeah, that's why they came for the parents. Yeah, because the parents tried to flee. They found the parents basically on the run. Man, wow. that was so hilarious. The, the reason it was hilarious is because they were like, "Oh, we weren't trying to run. Yeah, we just <laughs> took out four thousand dollars and left the state." Yeah, we were going to turn ourselves in at some point. You know, we were just going, we were just going for a little joy ride before we He's turned going ourselves camping. in. He's going camping. It's like, come on, you were on the run. And um, yo, I, they should fucking punish them, bro. 
They should punish their asses. I don't know if those charges will stick to them based off some of the stuff I read. They I, Look, they might not, but in my opinion, like, if you've been notified multiple times that your kid is fucked up, that your kid is drawing these pictures, that your kid is going through something, and it doesn't matter if the kid is lying and find ways to wiggle out of it, I feel like there's a certain amount of accountability that we have to put on parents. And once we start putting that accountability on yes, parents, you're going to see these school to. shooting shits change real quick when the parents think they could go to jail. Because some of these parents um, check out con- from them kids. Doesn't that contradict what we said about human behavior, though? What's that? Because it's not like I don't know. If, I don't think the parents were enabling his behavior. They bought him a gun, yeah. even though they knew he was a goofy. They didn't know what time it was. You yeah. see that in your kid. But also, the, also the father is the one who called nine one one and said, "My yeah, child." The mother child, texted my, him and said, "Don't do it." No, yeah, it was him that was gonna do it. But after, like, but this is after he did it. But that's the thing. She was like, she was like, "Don't do it," and. If you know that, if you're that sure that your sh- son is the one that could do it, then you should have been doing something in the first place. But it, I mean, it was, I could be telling the story all wrong, but from what I read, and by the way, I don't care either way, but, but from what I read, the father noticed his gun was missing. Called 911 and said, yeah, my son might be the shooter. And then the mother texts, don't do it. Huh. And I, But from what I read, I, I think she texts after the fact, after it yeah. was done. What so, happened was, and I don't know for a fact, but this is what I'm assuming. They heard there's a school shooting. They immediately go to check to see if their gun is there because they know their kid's a fucking psychopath and they were enabling that shit. Once they see the gun is not there, then they holler 911 and the mom says, don't do it. But they knew. Like, you know, if there's a school shooting and you know your kid and you know your kid's not crazy, you don't even got to check to see if yes. your gun is there. Yeah, you, you, you trying to see if you, was, your, was your kid the one that got shot. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh my God, my kid could be dead. Yeah, they didn't think that. that they think, oh my God, my kid took the gun that we bought him for his birthday and went to school and started shooting motherfuckers. You, you, know, knew, you know what man. that is? If Like, say if one of your people's crashed your car and they'd be like, yo, I bounce. You got to help me report your car stolen. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. all they did just that. I mm-hmm. wonder, you know, we, we had this conversation last week on uh, The God's Honest Truth um, about red flags. And um, the guy, Alex Yoblin, was saying how in majority of these shootings, there's always a bunch of red flags that you see from mm-hmm. individuals. Um, and one thing that he cited, he cited Dylan Roof in Charleston, South Carolina. But he he basically said Dylan Roof was a white supremacist. And when you went to his page, you saw a bunch of um, white supremacist stuff, right? Mm. Is that is that necessarily a red flag that you it's think a somebody's going to shoot? But you can't lock them up, though. No, 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 no. Is, is that a red flag that you think will lead to a shooting? I don't think that that would no. lead to a shooting just because a kid is racist. Mm. Yeah, you you could be a racist, and you're allowed to be a racist. I mean, there's a lot of people that hate different groups, and unfortunately, I don't know if it's unfortunate. Like, I wish they didn't, but that's not illegal to hate a group of people. Yeah. But I think the red flag behavior is when you start doing the shit that that kid was doing, like drawing pictures of murdering people. Mm-hmm. You know, say, saying things like, oh, I can't stop the thoughts. I can't stop thinking about it. You know, these thoughts are killing me, blah, blah, blah. Like when you start here and the school knows about oh, it, mercy. like when the school yes. calls you and they're like, yo, your kid's acting weird. That's the school going. I think this motherfucker about to shoot up this goddamn school. Would you do something about it? I, I bet you can't. they knew who it was. As soon as it went off, I bet you all the as teachers as said his name right and away. And the kids, and the kids as as too. The kids, the kids knew too. But I, the red flags are tricky though. I mean, I, I agree there are some blatant red flags, but then sometimes they say red flags are things like, oh, he kills animals. That's, yeah. If, yo, if you're a kid, you're out here killing animals, lock that motherfucker up immediately. <laughs> <What are you, laughs> lock him up. Why do you lock say him that? Up. Yeah. Lock him up. If you're just killing animals, not even to eat them, just killing animals for fun, that's like yeah. the first sign that you're a psychopath. They find out how when you're a kid, you take the cat, you just twist the cat's fucking head off. Oh, that's, that's, wild. That's, wild. that's wild. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild. They're that's wild. wild. That's wild. And There's you know early signs like for this shit. Jeez. And you know what? If we were more honest about it, like if we were more honest culturally about the problems and we like created a space for people to deal with these problems, then we probably have a safer society, but we're just not really ready to have that conversation. But like, we're not, we're, yeah, we're not giving, we're not getting people the help they need early, even yeah. though we notice a lot of the, yeah. the crazy stuff. We just ignore it, we right? We laugh at it, actually. We, yo, literally, if there was like, if there was some program that was like, listen, do you feel like killing animals? I know it sounds absurd, but it was like, do you feel like killing animals? Do you feel like doing this kind of shit? Call this number. We're gonna try to help you. We're gonna give you this. Yo, if there was a fucking number, these pedophile motherfuckers could call. And where they weren't arrested, they're like, yo, yeah. do you feel like you're attracted to young kids? Call this number. That we're going to help that, you do whatever idea, the Andrew. fuck. Like, I'd rather they call the number 
and be on, be on some like you know Anonymous registry and try shit. to get some help before they yeah. actually do something about it. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering. We had this conversation That's in regard to the uh, the play, the guy that worked at PlayStation. Uh-huh. What's that? Wow, you didn't see that? I don't know if he was the. Well, some somebody look up what his exact title was. He <laughs> was had like the some Sony exec. The Sony exec. Yeah, he yeah. Had, he had some high ranking uh-huh. exec at PlayStation, and you know he clearly is a a, a, a pedophile. Yeah, and it's like wow. yo, I was wondering like, what if they can't? What if those people just can't control their sexual urges or desires? Like, what if they really feel like? They were born see, that way. Why well, they need to I, go get a sex doll? I, I, see, here's the thing. You can control the behavior. You can't control what you want, but you can control the behavior. It's like yes. being addicted to heroin. Like, it's still a choice to do the heroin. Mm-hmm. You might really want it, but there are people that don't do heroin every single day they want to do it. There are people who don't smoke cigarettes every single day they want to do it. I don't so, know if that's a good example, only because those are true addictions. Uh, well, what I about pussy? You, you know you can't fuck is, this girl. Sexual desire is the greatest addiction, right? It's like yeah. we are put on this earth to have sex with who we are. Our body tells us we desire. Like that's that is the driving force of humanity. There's no exactly. greater addiction than that. That's a great. I mean, this is a great conversation. Um, and Charlemagne, it, 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 and it's like the girl that we really us we sexual desire the most. We probably never had sex with her. None of us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's the girl not we desire. Yeah, I mean. You know, your, your dream person before you met your wife and stuff like that. Like, we probably never had sex with that person. So, like, we, we got to control think, that I urge. Think, what do we, we, what I do we see here? I think it's a difference between, like, attraction to somebody and wanting to have sex with them and, like, true sexual desire. I honestly think true sexual desire, you know, m- maybe doesn't happen until after you have sex with a person. Mm-hmm. You what? know what I mean? That's what I believe. Charla, that's not true because I don't think he had sex with that 15 year old boy. He just had a sexual desire for him. That's my point. That's why I can't compare it to addiction. I don't think desire and addiction is. That's what, that's what I'm basically trying to say. I don't think desire and addiction is the same thing. Maybe. All right. Look, let's say that they're different. That's fine. Uh, what I would say the big fundamental difference is like when it comes to addiction, your brain chemistry is being switched so that you want this thing more. With sexual desire, your brain chemistry is that way, you know. So, yeah, I mean, but to, to your point, Sean, you said it earlier. You can control. control it. You can control yes. a desire. Yo, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think you can control an addiction. Yeah, Man, people do. You're gonna be addicted time. to this woman. What are you Not talking about? Help. That, what I'm saying is, we they need help. Like, like it's no excuse to act on your desire. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially There's if your stalker. desire is illegal. There's no excuse there. We don't got to feel bad for you. I can feel bad for you if you want to fuck kids. I don't feel bad for you once you do it. But the fact that you want to and if you're like, listen, fucking help me, please. I don't want to live this life. Fucking mm-hmm. help me. Give me a drug. Chop my balls off. Do anything so I don't do I'm, this because that's the last thing I want in this world. It's got to be. A, it's got to be some type of curse. Right. That's. I mean, that's what it would feel like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're, uh, if, you're, if you're if you feel like you're born to be attracted to like little kids, my God! And by the way, I don't you know feel sorry for them in any way, shape, or form. But I do feel like you know I feel um, sorry for them as long as they don't do anything. Um, I feel sorry for them if they're not getting help. I do like your idea of you know Get calling a hot, calling a hotline and saying like, "Yo, man, yeah. lock me away for I gotta I gotta figure this out." You know what I mean? One hundred percent. Like, so we well, a, what drove him to that, though, man? He they might, they might, up. that might, they might be born that way. Like, that might, like, that they or might they be might wired have, in that way. Like, they, I think there's some crazy statistic that shows that, like, people who molest have been molested. So it's like hurt that, people hurt people. Yeah, that hurt people hurt people. Like that mm-hmm, gets passed so. down. So it's like, like they could not even want to do that, but somebody fucked them when they was a kid. I said, so it, made, it, like, it made him made him think it was normal. Only reason I push back on that though, because there's plenty of people who were molested as kids who don't. Yeah, and I ain't touch who shit. don't molest kids. You know what yeah, I mean? Word, uh, yeah, that's true. You know, so I think I don't know. That's true. It, 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 it is it is a, it is a good conversation. You know what I mean? I'm like, just it, saying there's there's ways that we can look at these things, like because the ultimate thing that I'm sure we all care about is I don't want kids touched. So mm-hmm. how do we get to the point where the kids don't get touched? You know, a CEO said that yesterday. That's that's. That's what sparked the conversation. The CEO called Breakfast Club and was talking about the PlayStation exec. And she said, what happens is, you know, sometimes these guys get five, six years. You know what I mean? They go on the yard. If some people find out what they did, they'll probably get beat up. They'll probably get sexually assaulted in jail. But either way, they still come home five or six years later 
and nothing changes. Yep. They yeah, still have those desires mm-hmm. to, to be with little kids. You know what I mean? Yep. And like that sign that says sex offender lives here or whatever, that ain't enough. No. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? No. Like, and when they get when they go on there, they'll really find somebody else who up in there for the same thing and they learn different tactics how they did it. You know what I'm saying? Mean, I'll be honest with you. I, th- I think it should be life once you act on it. That's just my personal thing. Like if you have it, that's desire. If you have the desire and and you and you Jesus try Christ. to get help, you don't do anything, then let's help you. You're good. But once you act on it, you got to spend the rest of your life locked up. I'm sorry. There's no, we're not allowed to put you, you're not going to go back out into the world and do that shit again. Fuck you. And yeah, anybody who's so fighting for them to be back out there in the world is absolutely crazy or just doesn't have kids. We, we've had like, this conversation. No I way. agree with you. We've had this conversation on Burning Idiots oh, before because remember there was this whole thing about, uh, it was some years ago, there was like a community that was forming online of people who was trying to normal, normalize pedophilia. Basically saying like they were born this way, you know, this is what yeah. they're into, yada, yeah. yada, yada. Yeah. You don't these remember that? These people are crazy. Yeah, dude, these people, are, these people yeah, are crazy. It's like, that. we're not trying to normalize it. We're trying to get people help. Like, make sh- it's not normal, but let's help these people not do it because we care about the kids. Frankly, I don't give a fuck about these people, but I want to do the thing that's right for these children. You want to protect right? the kids. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's so like... Fix the problem. The problem yeah. is So done. it's either we shoot yes. you in the forehead or we try to find a way to problem. create some sort of system where you could get help and you don't act on these desires that are not your fault oftentimes. You didn't want this, but let's get yeah. you some help. But I think we're not going to have you out here with these kids. I think yeah, both Pussy works. is powerful, man. Pussy is powerful, bro. Put some pussy on them. Good get, pussy. get some pussy. <laughs> get some pussy. Yeah, just, yeah for real. <laughs> had a girl scream and act like she's the best man in the world and bring his pride back up. What yeah, if they don't want girls? Is, what, if they want, what if they want another man? Well, get somebody to jump on them. I know some some gay guys out there that would tear his ass up and get him right. Salute to all our get TSA him, workers, right. brother. Salute to all the yeah. TSA workers <laughs> who be fondling the fuck out of wax. I don't know nothing. We appreciate you. We, <laughs> right. I don't. Just let right. me go next time. No, I appreciate that. please. I enjoy the entertainment. <laughs> right. Why are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Keep copping those cheap fills. <laughs> all right. Let's pay some bills. Uh, Blue Chew. All right. Fall is here, and we all could use a stiff breeze. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. My brothers, uh, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one to their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Schultz, will you have some Blue Chew on deck next week for your wedding? Absolutely. fucking loot like that. Okay. Absolutely. fucking and for the honeymoon. Your boy is taking Ooh. narcotics across international borders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to take it out there. No, you got to do it. It's not even a question, man. It's just the best. It's the best thing you could do for your girl. Plain and simple. You know, I, I don't even do it for me. I do it for her. She deserves it. She deserves it. Just like the, the wedding. The blue shoe is the it. wedding of performance, sexual performance <laughs> enhancing drugs. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Absolutely. It's fun, man. That's why I get it. Simple as that. BlueChew.com. Make sure you use that promo code. That promo code is IDIOTS, isn't it, Charlamagne? That's right. That's right. If you, IDIOTS, if you take, and you're going to get it for free. All you got to do right. is pay $5 shipping. BlueChew.com. Use that promo code IDIOTS, and you file a shipping. What else we got, man? Listen, if you could, uh, re- just to quote, wrap on BlueChew, if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, BlueChew can help. And as Schultz just said, we got a special deal for our listeners. You can try BlueChew free. When you use our promo code IDIOTS at checkout, you just pay the $5 shipping. So you can get it for free. All right? Just pay the $5 shipping by using promo code IDIOTS. That's BlueChew.com, promo code IDIOTS, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots. And we also got to thank Keeps. Salute to Keeps, man. You see me out here with the baldy baby, so I'm not even yeah. going to do it. Go ahead, nah, show. You need to listen, guys. There's one way to let you know that you're aging gracefully as a man, and that yeah. is if you got the full head of hair. Um, you know, it's as simple as that. I've been on this for over a decade, bro. I'm telling you, my hair is still intact. Look at me, keeping it beautiful with Keeps. 
Uh, it's simple as that, man. Keeps is going to take care of your ass. Keeps going to make sure you keep the hair on your head and you got to get in there early. Don't wait for all your hair to be gone and then try to grow it back. No, it's going to keep what you got. Sometimes you get a little growth back. That was me. I was lucky enough to get that. But you got to make sure that you get on there so you don't lose your fucking hair. This is an absolute no brainer. OK, wait until you get married to go bald. But before that, keep your fucking hair. As a matter of fact, while you're married, keep your hair and keep your wife on her toes, man. You know, you got options. You got the full head of hair. So, Charlamagne, how can they get that keeps, man? They can get the keeps by, okay, going to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots. Now, let's get back to the show. Let's we got church it. announcements. Yo. I do have church announcements, man. I do. Absolutely. We're adding a fourth show at the Wilbur Theater for New Year's Eve and New Year's Eve's Eve in Boston. Boston, come fuck with us, man. Um, yeah, man. The, the first three, y'all are amazing coming out support. So we added another one on that uh, New Year's Eve's Eve. So the 30th. So we're going to do two, 30th, two, uh, 31st. Also, Canada. You already know, man, all those shows we added. TheAndrewSchultz.com. You go check those out. We're just putting on Cleveland and Alabama. Cleveland and Birmingham as well. We're adding it to it. Vancouver, we're adding another show. TheAndrewSchultz.com. Go check out the list of cities. We are coming to your city. Get those <clears throat> tickets early. I'm tired of motherfuckers tweeting me and DMing me talking about, oh, the tickets cost $500 a ticket, da, da, da. That's what happens when you wait. Get them early when I first put them up, and you're going to get them for those prices. TheAndrewSchultz.com the infamous tour. Jacksonville was fucking crazy. Little Duval popped in, man. That was an awesome surprise guest. You know how much I love Duval and how much of an inspiration he is to me. So that was awesome. Just a great show. And uh, I'm looking forward to New Year's, man. I saw Duval, man. I saw him pop up at the, uh, the Jacksonville show. How was it? He's just a legend, bro. He flew himself in Comes right. in right when the show starts, <laughs> watches the show, comes out, does smile, bitch. You know, it surprises everybody, everybody going crazy, and then flies back to Atlanta that night. Just popped right. in for your boy. It was just so dope, man. So That's dope. dope. That's dope. He's the so, man. So, 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 so were the crowd similar? Did your, your audience definitely know who Duval was? Yeah, we're in Jacksonville, too. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, he's the king. So it's like... You know, obviously they're gonna know, and he's gonna do his song. So, but uh, but he's also just such a showman, man. Like it was funny. He's just chilling back there smoking weed, and I'm like, yes, yeah, so we'll do this thing where like you'll be the surprise, and the thing comes up, and he was just like, yeah, man, just tell me when to go. Like, you know, like <laughs> he just knows that when the lights are on, he's, he's gonna right. do his That's fucking who thing. He is. That's yeah, who he is. Just, he's the, I, he's the I best. I wonder, man. um. Well, it's not a wonder. I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm asking the question. It's like you know, all of these audiences are way more similar than they are different. And I wish that a lot of times when it came to entertainment um, or, or, or even any, any form of entertainment, sports included, I wish that the same energy we had for, for people that we enjoy entertainment-wise, we just had as a society all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? How yeah. a bunch of different people of all races and genders and everything else can come together to go watch an Andrew show. So see Duvall come out and be like, oh, uh -huh. shit, that's Duvall. I love Duvall. And then uh -huh. shame, shame somebody who doesn't know who Duvall. You don't know who the fuck Duvall is? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? They do now. Or, or vice versa. Schultz come out to a Duvall show. You don't know who the fuck Schultz is? That's, yeah. that's yeah. the kind of uh -huh. shit I like shaming yeah. people over. Yeah, Everything man. else, are, any other difference that we may have, skin color, gender, whatever? That's, yeah, that's what. Wax, you got yeah. you got church announcements. Yes, yeah. sir. I got um. We got a live show on February fifth, man. Y'all finished getting y'all tickets. I don't know they, what's going on. How you man. don't know the date? I said February fifth. Oh, you said February fifth, yeah, and then you said you don't know the date. I don't know. I said I don't know if the tickets are sold out or not, but oh. still go on there and check out and see what's going on. That'd be dope. Um, uh, you know my weed is out there. But where's the show at? First of all, Wax. it's in New York City. What's the what's the venue? It's, it's, it's all up on. Crazy. It's on Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite and put in Bully and the Beast, and um, y'all go ahead and get y'all tickets out there. Uh, you know, I got my herbs out there in, in L.A. Your local dispensary. Go out there and grab that. Um, my gummies is on whoswax.com. Y'all go ahead and do that. And I, my um, paintball facility, man. Y'all come out there and play airsoft. Uh, get your teens ready. We're gonna. I got the podcast wars coming up real soon. I'm saying, get a ten on ten. 
want to see all out, y'all out there. So, you know, come holler at us. You should have a, a table at Andrew's wedding full of Who's Wax gummies. Oh, all that's coming. Oh, all that. Even some, some of your shows, man. When I come to your show, because we definitely got to come to one of your shows, I'm definitely bringing the Who's Wax with me. Oh, Radio you know City. Wing. I'm definitely there for the Radio City show. Yeah, Who's Wax will definitely be in the building, baby. We'll uh, see. We'll see. Got we'll you. see. We'll back. see. Definitely got Charlie you. Been, been everybody going to be on that Charlie been coming maybe. to a show for the last three years. We'll see if you're at Radio City. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm definitely coming to the Radio City We got to come, show. bro. We got to come. We always talk about, like, we have to hit one of the shows. We cannot not make it. And then Little Duval came up there and showed out. We there, baby. He came yeah, and performed, bro. He performed. My man. <laughs> I mean, he flew a plane, dog. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's so fire, yeah, last bro. time I came to a com- last time I last time I came to a comedy show was this year, and it was at Radio City. I think that was at Radio City. Nah, Believe didn't you go to bro. Carolines or some shit? No, nah, not this there? year. I went, to, I, went, I went to go see Ali. Wong. <laughs> I went to go see Ali Wong. <laughs> oh, man. Ali. Wong. Wong. I missed my guy Neil. I wanted to go see Neil, but I, I missed Neil. But I, I went and saw Ali Wong at uh at Radio Love City. Neil. Uh, my, my, mine is simple, man. Go to blackeffect.com. Down, uh, you know, salute to everybody that's been downloading all the podcasts on blackeffect.com. Uh, tune into the God's Honest Truth every Friday night at 10 p.m. on Comedy Central. Uh, this week, Chloe Bailey will be joining us this week. Um, and you can screen new episodes on Paramount Plus. And, um, yeah, there'll be a conversation. Let me see. We dropped this today. We dropped this today. There'll be a conversation about a conversation. I recently had, but can't talk to y'all about that next week. But 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 y'all will be y'all will be talking about it. Why? What's today? up today? Nah, they'll just be talking about it today. By the time by the time this drops, they'll be tuning into this to hear what I had to say about the conversation that they're listening to. But you know, why don't we, we have that conversation? Let's do it. Nah, I, I like to wait till. I like to wait till things are all the way completed. I like to wait oh. till things are in the atmosphere. In the so you ecosystem. can react to what they're saying. Not even react to what they're saying. I just be, you know, that's just the way I'm wired. Like, I don't like to even talk about nothing until it's here. You know, I, I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy that goes to the Netflix building because I had a pitch meeting and then take a picture in front of the sign. I hate that shit. <laughs> I hate you, you ain't out here. You ain't out here pre-coming. Hate you hate pre-coming. I hate, I hate that pre-coming. shit, bro. Like, I'm not <laughs> you know that what guy. that is? That's that's admitting to yourself that nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you you already know you're not gonna get the HBO thing or the Netflix thing, whatever. So you're like, let me still Hilarious. get this picture off so y'all think mm-hmm. I'm popping. But if you bro, really believe you were gonna sell the show, then you'd wait for the show keep to come it out. Secret, yeah. Bro, I had this conversation you yesterday can't twice with Nyla and Taylor and Michaela and Sim waxing our group chat. I'm like, I don't understand what y'all idea of popping is because they be telling me that certain things are popping and certain people are popping and I don't be knowing these people. And by the way, just because I don't know them don't mean that they're not popping. But I just Mm. like, yo, people got to stop being impressed with the illusion of things. It's like, yo, I I almost wonder like, damn, would I get more out out of showing people all the times Nothing has come of these meetings. <laughs> I gotta take. I've, I've taken pic. I've taken pictures. I've literally taken pictures of, like you know, over the years you might walk into a building and take a picture of a the sign, whatever. I'm like, I could have been doing this for years. Yeah, but bro, what's the on, point? Man. What's the point we, of showing people the process? We had. I, I jizzle could be. We uh, had our pictures in the building. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, and yeah. that and that I'm yeah. not even sure if I showed, but yeah. like you would walk into Viacom and our picture would be in the fucking building. I'm looking at one. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. Yup. <laughs> you know yup. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's fire. Uh-huh. I got another one. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Remember this. Oh hell mm-hmm. yeah, dude! That was the easiest check in the business, right there, boy. Remember that uncommon sense, you know? Dude, that was su- I think it was I think every week we record that once a week, right? I did uncommon sense once a week for three years. That's why right. it was cr- that was a three year show. That show did three years, like sixty episodes, something like that. Bro, that was just such great money. That was cheating. That right there was cheating. All of this. Shows. All of this is cheating, bro. 
Yeah, I guess you we right. live a great lives, man. God is good. That's why I do. I, I, that's why I don't understand why people be being assholes. Because I'm like, bro, we don't, <laughs> we don't do much, bro. Yeah. And at, at any moment, people could just turn this shit off. Yeah, you know what the I'm mo- saying. The most we do is sacrifice, though. We sacrifice our loved ones that you find that don't really like you anyway. You know what I'm saying so. What do you mean? Because of because of what? A little bit of fame. Um, whatever. I mean, you could just, like I said the other day, you, don't, you ain't got to be no fame. You got to have more than that person. If that person a straight bum and you got $2 more than him, yeah. he, want, he want that. So you ain't got to yeah, be yeah. fame no more. It's ugly. That's here, right. Bro. That's 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 interesting too. But, it, but just to put a button on what, what we were talking about, it's like, yo, I could literally, we could literally be, show, I'm, you've had a million pitch meetings. Yeah. You've, had, you've had meetings with people that are known individuals. I, I've had meetings with some amazing people. I don't feel the desire to take those pictures and videos. Wax, no, wax always there. Yeah. If, yeah. I talk, if, I, if I showed y'all a quarter. I'll pop, the, I shouldn't be popping, bro. Man, yeah, come man, on. Man, people come have on, no yo. idea. Yeah. Stay out the mm. way, baby. And I, just, I, I just like enjoying the moment. I really do enjoy the moment. I enjoy, enjoy the it moment. better. Yeah, we don't put it out come there on, for anybody. That's yours. That's yours. That's you know what I'm saying? I battle that sometimes like... Uh, you know, like sometimes I'm just sharing a moment with the boys or like I'm sharing a moment with, you know, the team and or like even maybe the three of us will be doing something fun. And like there's part of me, it's like, man, I do want to take a picture of this and share this. But there's also part of me, it's like, I don't want to taint it. Like, I just want this to be pure. I just want us to hang out and not feel like we have to like monetize that friendship or, you know, share it on social media. Look how much fun we're having <laughs> together. Like, though, I can I tell you, you know, it what I'm don't saying? make like, no more fun. Yeah, I hate, yeah. hate posts. Like, yo, y'all get together and pose. Just take the picture if you see us just rocking. That's more better. Like, I, I yeah, can promise Jesus you it Christ. don't make the moment no more fun. All right? I've been set. The past yeah. two weeks, I've been celebrating my ass off because yeah. it's my wife born day. Yeah. And I done been in the country, out the country, in the country, partying with my folks, small, intimate gatherings. Yeah. And so. we've been having a blast. Yeah. Okay? And, and I don't feel the need to share it. And by, it's, it's been people that's been coming to these events that I could ch- post and be like, oh, look at that. Like, why? Yeah. Uh, stay out the way. Baby. Why? Why? Yeah, so much it better. makes it that much more better. It makes it more fun. And you know yeah. what else? You know what else, Schultz? It makes people not want to miss things. Yeah. If I tell you to be yeah. somewhere, you should be there. Yeah. Because you never know. <laughs> what could happen? You, you never know what could yeah, happen. They, yeah, they got they got 50% of the satisfaction with the video. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They get this put it out there. Nah, make them miss it all the way. Yeah. It's an it's a balance, man. Also, we're in a different situation. Like, I don't blame the person that has a private Instagram. It's just their friends and family that post things all the time because at all. You want to share it with the world. But, you know, we also look at our, you know, social media as like a it's a product. That's you know, all it it's, is. Yeah, it's it's a product. But at the same time, I like sharing things with people. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, when I'm traveling and I'm in a place that, like, I've never been before and I'm experiencing this culture in a way that I've never experienced it, like, I like sharing that with people because maybe that might inspire them to go travel to those places or maybe sure, they'll never yeah. be able to travel and they just get to actually see it. And that's cool to them, you know? I So it's a fine line. Like, I, I'm a hypocrite about this shit. I could sit here and be like, why we got to take pictures and post? But I'm going to do it. I'm gonna share pictures of my I mean, wedding. So I'm gonna share pictures of, t- of my shows. A lot of times, like, people, a lot of time those people be miserable at them at them trips. You know what I'm saying? She probably with an old ass man, and mm. they just showing their little fun time. But they're miserable at that fucking trip. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky, man. It is. It you is know, tricky. Andrew brought up. I mean, uh, Wax brought up a good point too, man. About you know the season that we're in, man. I just want everybody to like stay safe, keep your head on a swivel. Uh, I've been seeing some weird hot takes. You know what I mean? Wow, what um, we got? What we got? Well, you know, if you if you out in LA or anywhere really, Jersey, New York, you know, you've been hearing about you know these home invasions and you know people getting robbed and things of that nature and like, um, I just been seeing some weird hot takes of people acting like it's only, I guess, celebrities or people with money complaining about this. And what Wax said is true: people are just starving. If you got two dollars and this person don't, you got two dollars more than that person. You're in trouble. They so you. if you think that this is just about celebrity or this is just about public figures or it's just about you know people who got, you're crazy. Every and day, guy get hit up every day, bro. Yeah, and you're missing the whole point, man. Salute to m- one of my idols. You've heard me say on this podcast before that when it comes to this entertainment business, 
I have four people that influence me and four people that I idolize. And that's Sean, Jay-Z, Carter, Petey Green, God Bless the Dead, Arsenio Hall, and Clarence Avon. You know what I'm saying? Climax North Carolina's Clarence Avon. And, you know, his wife, you know, recently was was killed in, I guess, some type of, you know, home invasion. And, you know, I'm just seeing these strange hot takes from people saying, oh, now celebrities want to be worried. Let me tell y'all something, man. Anybody that will run up in somebody's house and kill an 81-year-old woman, don't give a damn about black or white, don't give a damn about rich or poor, they just, they'll, they'll do you just like they did that queen. Right yeah. up. Okay? So you can sit here and think, you know, it got to do with fame and fortune no. or anything. No, it has to do with the type of people that we're dealing with in this society and they will come get you. That woman mm. wasn't on, that woman wasn't on Instagram stunting. Yeah. Mm. That woman Come on, wasn't man. on Insta. That woman wasn't on Instagram, you know, showing off what she doing. Word up. But it's like everybody just be aware of the season that we're in. That that that's all I'm saying. That's yeah. It. That's yeah. It. Yeah, it's tricky, man. It's a very tricky one. Yeah, the the fear of being robbed exists for both parties. It exists across all races, religions. Yep. It is a sure. unifying fear. And um, it's kind of taken hold. And I think the media is really out there. I don't want to say pushing it, but they're definitely sharing these stories. And uh, it's scary, man. When you eat a fucking hamburger and a dude comes up to you, puts a gun in your fucking back and goes, give me your watch. It's hard not to be terrified about that. We were with an armed guard yesterday and he was telling us about that. He was telling yeah. us about that exact situation. And he was like, what yeah. are you supposed to do in that situation? He was like, up, one dude got a gun in front of you, one dude got a gun behind you. So even if you try to go fight the dude in front of you, so, the other dude might clap. Not worth it, bro. He was yeah. just like, yo, you got to give it up. But think about the boldness of that. That's, that's my point. And those two yeah. people who were eating lunch, who were they? So for anybody to think that it's only celebrity this is happening to, you're out of your damn mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all of us should be concerned about what's happening in these streets right now. Yeah. <laughs> Period. Because, because it's getting more bolder. That, that is another prime example. Broad daylight, lunch in a room full of people. Everyone, run that. Lord have mercy. Where are you safe? <coughs> yeah, yeah. It's wild. Yeah, it's, it's really tricky, wild, man. And I think that's why maybe some people are are upset with like celebrities or whatever because maybe they feel like the celebrities have dismissed it. You know, like there's a there was a tweet back and forth between uh, Casey Neistat, who's a very famous YouTuber, pioneered Casey. vlogging. And um, and then Seth Rogen and Casey was like, yo, what the fuck? My car got broken into, yada, yada, yada. And Seth's like, basically kind of, he, he wasn't, didn't seem like he was being a jerk, but he's like, my car has been broken into a hundred times. Like this is life in the big city. And I think now that you see this like high profile breaking and entering and it also is a murder, like maybe all these poor middle-class people are going like, now you want to take a serious celebrities? Like, it's easy for you guys to live in your gated communities and sit out here and be like, no, this is just Los Angeles. This is just what it's like. like. It's easy to sit there in safety and do it. But now that it's touched your doorstep, are you going to keep that same energy? Are you going to get out there and tweet, hey, this is just life in the big city? It's like, nah, it don't matter if it's life. Then let's change the big city. Let's Let's clean up the fucking big city. Like, Like, come on. Like, we, we're not normalizing that. <laughs> like, yeah. Like just because like it, just just it happens all the time tweet. and it happened to you doesn't mean we should normalize it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of you do because I don't think it's going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Long, yeah. if, unless you're about to tell me things are about to get better right now, you got to kind of got to normalize. You got to be prepared and ready for it. And if you sit there and lax on it, like you're saying, this guy had a security guard in the house and his wife still got shot. Somebody was laxed. Yeah, Somebody, but I, don't, I don't think we normalize the crime. We should normalize the crime prevention. You know what's interesting, though? Yeah. Let's is think it like, be better, bro. We have all these robberies, right? And there's like a string of, I'm about to sneeze, but we have all these robberies and there's like a string of robberies. But at the same time, you walk into every I love, rest- how, I love, I love how the biggest nose on the podcast warns everybody. I got to let y'all know, man. I got to let y'all know. Take, <laughs> hey, take off your headphones. <laughs> you know what I mean? The hurricane's coming. So I, I, I'm like, 
I'm like, okay, all these people are saying like, oh, we're desperate. People are hungry out there. That's why they got to rob this, that, the other, right? And okay. then you walk That's down the saying. street and every restaurant is like, we're still hiring. Every restaurant is like, we're not open for breakfast because we can't oh, hire we enough people. Every garage is like, we need to hire more people. Yes. Every hotel is like, we need to hire more people. So it's like, I don't, I don't buy necessarily this story about people are starving out there. It's like, there's jobs. You don't, y'all, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are people starving out there. A hundred percent there are. I, yes. I, I recognize that. But I'm also yes. saying that there are jobs out there that are available. You might not want to do them jobs, they but there are jobs the out there that are available and they are ready to hire, you know? So it's like, there's opportunity. There's opportunity can be taken advantage of. It's just a lot quicker to go up and stick somebody up and get $10,000 yes. for a watch. Yep. So it's not like but, this is what I'm doing to survive. It's like, no, this is what you're doing to thrive. This no, is this, some this, this, this is what I'm doing to maintain the same girl, the same lifestyle. I got, Boom. I cannot go lower. If I, I go lower, go they're going to kill me down here because I was stunting on them niggas. I was doing this. If I go yeah, back down with them. PPP loan. Uh, that PPP loan gone. Yeah, yeah, You know what yeah. I'm saying? I can't hustle so like that greed. no more. They on our hill. Yeah. So that's greed. So let's not confuse greed with desperation. Right? That's real. That's there's, real. There's, that, because goes back are, to, that goes back to our desire addiction conversation. Boom. I agree. Boom. So yeah, let's let's not. If these people were stealing five dollars so they could get a sandwich and eat, that's different. You out here stealing watches, you here break too, it though. into the Louis Vuitton store. Louis Vuitton isn't food. Louis Vuitton is yeah. flex. And there's Flexing. a difference between food and flex. If you're stealing a flex, you're not desperate. Nah. If you're yeah, literally stealing it's pampers, between looting, it's a difference between looting and just trying to survive. But what, what about robbing yes. a jewel, dude for his jewels and stuff like that? What would you call that? They're trying to flex. They're trying to keep up the lifestyle. That's greed. If you're stealing pampers from the grocery store, that's food, that's heartbreaking, yeah. bro. Right. That's different. That's like, hey, we need to help you. But like, yes, every restaurant I go to is hiring. Every garage I go to is hiring. Right? Yes. Every hotel I go to I is hiring. Those, everything is short staffed. Right Everything's now. short real. staffed. That's real. And, they, and, and they're saying that they're begging Target, for people to come work. Hiring. Target's paying twenty dollars an hour. Amazon hiring. Like, there's jobs out there. So don't give the me that shit. Like, there, you can't bro. get a job. All you need is eyeballs. Yo, COVID be- fucked everybody up. They, it sh- it sh- COVID showed you that you don't have to work and you still survive for a whole year. And well, they still that, on that. So now we're getting back to normal. It's like, oh, I don't want to work. It's like everybody who had to stay home at work and now that the office is telling them to go back, they're like, I don't want to go back. Yeah. I got to be around people. Yeah. We're doing this on Zoom right now. Shit. Bro, I already said I don't think I'm going back in the studio till the top of the year. <laughs> See? And then I'm top of the year, you're going to come around and you're yeah. like, man, it's comfy at home. I'm going to, I mean, I, you know, I go do TV, you know, I go tape the TV uh-huh. show, you know, Breakfast Club, I'll be right here. I got, you see my, I'm right here in my studio right now. Yeah. I got the radio station at the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Tired of being stressed out every goddamn morning for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. Get saying? a little more sleep, get an hour more <sighs> sleep. Get an hour more sleep, which goes a long fucking way. Damn right. Damn. You know? All right, let's pay some more bills, man, and come back and do some asking idiots, man. Let's talk about one of my favorite sponsors of the brilliant idiots, just because this is one of my favorite services, period, and that's Talkspace. You know what I mean? We are in the holiday season the same way we're warning y'all about, you know, the robberies and, you know, everything else that may be going on. The other thing we need to be talking about is depression. You know what I'm saying? Because, man, the holiday season, the end of the year, is a time of reflection for a lot of people. and Sometimes when people sit still for that moment and they're reflecting on things, they don't like how the years went. You know what I'm saying? And they don't like how their life has been going thus far. Or they might be, you know, grieving a little bit harder because they lost loved ones earlier this year. So the holidays are very, 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 very tough. And I encourage everyone to go speak to somebody, man. And, you know, meeting with a therapist to work on your mental health, to me, is just as helpful as hiring a personal trainer to work on your physical health. And the positive impact that you can have from therapy is life-changing, all right? Talkspace makes it possible to speak with a licensed therapist right from your phone, tablet, or computer. And unlike traditional therapy, you can message your therapist anytime via text, video, or voice. It's 100% secure and stigma-free the way therapy should be. At Talkspace, your privacy and security are their number one priority. The app puts you in a private room with just you and your therapist, all right? You can send messages 24 24- seven and get replies throughout the day. No need to wait for a weekly appointment. Talkspace's encryption and added security features keep your conversation fully protected. You know, therapy is essential to my life, man. I go to therapy once a week and it has been a game changer. It has absolutely positively got me on my, my process, you know, of healing. 
and I enjoy it. Top of the year, I plan to start getting into cognitive behavioral therapy. So I will be looking for, um, you know, a new therapist that specializes in, 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 in that. So that's what, I, that's my next move. So whether you struggle with anxiety, depression, self-doubt, or anything else, Talkspace gives you access to the help you need to move forward. Facing those obstacles isn't easy and you don't win a prize for doing it alone. Getting professional help isn't weird or weak. It's smart because sure, your friend might know a thing or two about electricity, but would you let him rewire your house? So don't leave your mental health to chance or the amateur advice of well-meaning friends and family. Talk to someone who's trained to help you make lasting progress. Join Talkspace today and start moving forward with a single message. Just visit Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month when you use promo code IDIOTS at sign up. That's $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code IDIOTS. Now, I also got to salute Cushy Dreams. Do you feel like you can't avoid stress and anxiety? Huh? You might be doing therapy and it's still not working. Are you in pain or having trouble sleeping? Or maybe you would just like to have a calmer brain while you stay active. Well, guess what? I believe in plant-based medicine. And that's why I believe in Cushy Dreams, okay? Cushy Dreams has solutions. Cushy Dreams specializes in high-quality smokable CBD. And CBD has been shown to help with anxiety, depression, inflammation, pain, relief. And I think it'll work for you, okay? They offer both indigo and sativa strains. I prefer indigo. And you get to pick the mood you want to experience. Did you hear me? You get to pick the mood you want to experience. Relax, create, hustle, peace, energy, dream. Plus, there's no hangover because there's no high. There's no high! And CushyDreams.com is having their biggest sale ever now until January 1st, okay? Take 40% off everything on the site. No promo code needed, all right? Just go to CushyDreams.com. That's K-U-S-H-Y dot com until the end of the year. 40% off Stay 40% off site-wide, no code needed. After January 1st, use promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your next order. Smoke your CBD and get 40% off today. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, where are the asking idiots? Taylor says she sent them. I don't see them. Let me see. I don't uh, see no asking idiots. Neither do I. I just see ads. I can read them out. Uh, oh, I, okay, I, let's says do it, can read them. All right. Um, from Taco Slayer, if you could be any Taco car- <laughs> Slayer, Taco Slayer. Yeah. Okay. If you could be any ca- cartoon character, who would it be? Any cartoon character, who would I be? And and Marvel and them count as cartoons or? No, nah, that's comic books. So cartoons. Nah, talking about cartoons Simpsons. Too? Yeah, but like I think they're referring to like Simpsons and like uh, Family yeah. Guy and that kind of shit. Beavis and Butthead. Ooh, that's fire. Yeah. I, I I don't think Beavis and Butthead got anything on you, Wex. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are much closer to Beavis and Butthead than you may realize. Yeah, you I, might lo- I love that show. I hate when they put it out. Put it off. I hate it. Um, uh, That's a good question. Who would I be? What cartoon character would I be? I don't really fucks with cartoons like that. I don't know. What about you, Charlotte? Uh, Huey Freeman from the Boondocks. Ah, Huey Freeman from the Boondocks is the uh-huh. cartoon character that I would be. I love Hilarious. Huey Freeman. I mean, I love Boondock I love, I love the Boondocks period. But yeah, definitely Huey Freeman. Huey Freeman was a a, a very uh smart, wise young man, martial artist who always had a plan, very strategic. Um, and I mean, honestly. Mm, one of the things I hope for is that, you know, Aaron continues to be able to tell stories of the boondocks. But I don't know if I necessarily want to see the boondocks, you know, stay uh, as kids because I would like to see how Huey and Riley are when they grow up. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And even if they do stay as kids, I at least need some episodes where I at least get a get to the future to right. see what would happen if Huey and, Huey and Riley, you know, grew up. Right, right. So yeah, Huey Freeman from the Boondocks for me. Yeah, I'm trying to think, man. Who would I be? What cartoon character would I be? You strike me as a Bart Simpson type of guy, Andrew. I mean, I fucks with Bart yeah. heavy. I just never, I didn't watch The Simpsons like that, but I like that kind of like shitster, trouble starter, misfit. I enjoy that energy that he had, for yeah, sure. I wonder how Bart feels being the GOAT, the unappreciated, Longest running, most consistent, yeah, real, made more money than all these motherfuckers goat, but yeah. he don't get recognized as such. 
Yeah, like 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 like, like the Simpsons is is like I yeah, I know we are in the South Park dicks nowadays and yeah. the, the family guys have come along okay, and even the okay. boondocks and the yeah, king of the hills and everybody, but let's not act like the Simpsons aren't truly the king of the fucking nah, hill. Real. We yeah. don't appreciate the Simpsons, bro. Yeah, that's true. Like we don't give them enough credit. They've been around for decades. Killing who did Bart still. Voice? Do they know who did Bart Voice? Tracy yeah, this Oman. girl. Tracy Was Oman. It a lady? Tracy Oman. Wow. Her name is Tracy Oman? Tracy Oman did Bart Simpson. Oh, I didn't know that. Bro, you don't know you know who Tracy Oman is, bro. I know Tracy Chapman. No, man. Tracy Oman, she used to have Tracy her own Jenkins. show. She's a British American actress. Nah, she, she didn't actually, do Bart. She didn't do Bart? No. You sure? Oh, man, you don't on, know what you're talking about, bro. I nah. made that up. <laughs> you know who I might want to be? Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck. Remember Darkwing oh, Duck? Oh, no, you know, you know what? I'm lying. No, I'm lying. You're right. The, the Simpsons first appeared on uh, the Tracy Oman show. Because remember yeah. when Tracy Oman had her own show on Fox and the Simpsons was a, a category. I mean, not a category. It was a, it was a small, like, interstitial they used to play on Tracy Oman. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what it was. I yeah, forgot, I feel you. But you say you'd be Darkwing Duck? Yo, Darkwing Duck was fire, man. Let's get dangerous. Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck was hard. All them ducks was hard, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yo, the Darkwing ducks Duck. are fire. Like, oh, Nancy Cartwright. I, I like the A-Team. Is that a cartoon? No, Nancy Cartwright uh, did uh, Bart Simpson. Uh, uh, oh, that. you're right, it's not. Mm. Yeah, uh. salute to the GOAT Bart Simpson, though, man. All of the Simpsons, man. Y'all disrespect. Mm -hmm. And we can't even sit here and say we're going to appreciate the Simpsons when they gone. Because they're going to outlive all of us. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be around. Yeah. They're going to be around, for sure. <laughs> they're going to be around. What else we got, Al? It was another asking idiot, Alex. All right, next one. Um, from XI Lux Luck XI. Do we all have free will or is everything predestined? Ooh. Oh, that's a deep one. That's a deep one right there, my dude. That's a deep one. Free will. There's arguments for both. There's hey, arguments God, for God, both. God give us free will. God give us yeah. free will, but you could also make the argument that all these decisions that we're making right now are like based on synapses firing on our brain and those decisions. Uh, are not like us choosing, but rather like what our brain tells us we want. Following our heart. No, you're real. You're real. You're yeah. Right. So that's a really interesting one. I think that we have free will and I like to believe we have free will because that gives me more power in my life. I don't want to know everything's determined. I work this hard because I believe I have the free will to change my life and create opportunities for myself. Last thing I want to believe is that everything's going to happen for me regardless. Mm -hmm. So, but then someone might come say, hey, right. you don't got the free will to not work hard. Your you destiny is to work hard, this fucking hard. So, ooh, that's a tricky one. What do y'all think? Mm. Oh. Mm. I guess, I guess you, you go towards your urges so much. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's just destined. You know what I'm saying? You get those urges. You know what I'm saying? You only eat because you're hungry. You only drink because you're thirsty. You know what right. I'm saying? Uh, you only want pussy because you you horny. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I, I guess you get those inside your body and make you go towards that right direction. That's destiny, you know We right? get a hunger for, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's, um, I don't think we have a free will to ourselves. I think when you go off of that, when you go against the grain and you go against that, I think that's when you fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't eat, you hungry as hell. You just like, I'm not eating. I'm not drinking water. You know you're supposed to be drinking water. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's when you go off the rail and you go off the tracks and, right. and you be out here asking, trying to rob people and shit. That's a great question. I really don't know. I think we all, I, I, yeah, I, I feel what both of y'all are saying. I think we we have free will, but man, sometimes if you just, um, sometimes if you just tap into that thing, man, I don't know what that thing, what people call that thing. You could call it God. You know, you could call it energy. You can call it the universe. It's just sometimes when you just sit down long enough, it's like you'll get the answers. I can't describe it to people. It's like if you just sit down and you let your mind be still sometime and, you know, whether you pray, whether you meditate, it's like, and I can only speak for me, it's like God has literally, or, 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 I say I call it God, but has literally guided me to do X, Y, and Z. And I mean, I mean I'm talking about every step of the way. You know what I mean? And when I was younger, I felt like it was just free will and me not listening to God. But I still think God wanted me to go through certain things because 
when I ultimately started listening to God in the way that I should it, and, and was put in the position that I'm in now, a lot of those things give me a certain level of experience and, and allow me to speak to, you know, certain things and allow me to help people, you know, not make the same mistakes that I made. You know, mm. even when I talk about <laughs> getting fired f- from four times from radio or getting fired seven times in life. If I hadn't gotten fired from those jobs back in the day, like Demo in the Mall or Industrial Acoustics Company or right. Paragon Solutions, I wouldn't have right. committed my time to radio the way that I did. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And being fired those four times, every time I got fired, I moved up to a, a different level and I moved up with a, 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 a little bit more experience. So, man, I really don't know. And the only thing that's keeping me from answering that question fully is when you see certain things happen to certain people that are final. When you see somebody yeah. use their free will to take somebody else's life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, to go off the tracks, yeah. It's just hard for me to believe that that was your destiny. Yeah. Like, that's what God had destined for you. But I don't know. I really don't. That's, that is a very mind-boggling question that I don't necessarily have an answer for. And that yeah. is okay, too. We don't always have to have answers to things, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you got you to know every time. Whatever you do, that that second directly affects that minute and yeah. affects that, that hour, affects that, the month. So think about what you do with that second, man. If it goes in your mouth, what comes out of your mouth. So mm. it'll be all right. Hey, yo. Do push, and, and hey, do push-ups. Yo. Yeah. Hey, that sounded like jail to me. <laughs> that sounded like you was just waiting on the time and hey. whatever goes in your mouth comes out of your mouth and do push-ups. You better watch yeah. it. You better, you better watch, watch that clock and watch that time go and you know, whatever goes in your mouth comes out of your mouth and do your push-ups. Okay. Now, of course, it's what, everything, baby. What else we got? All right, I'll do this last one from Rastar32. If you all were women but with the same personalities, would you still be friends and have the same dynamic? If we all did what? If we're all women, but we had the same personalities, but we have the same dynamic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think our dynamic is no, based on personality. No, because I was too much of a whore. If, if <laughs> was a man, she would not allow me to be around Charlotte. Oh, I, fuck. I, yeah. I was, too, I was a whore friend. And I'm like, would you still around that whore for like, what the fuck yeah, are you doing? Why do you hang you out with that whore all day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, that's a true statement. That yeah, might be that, difficult. That'd be difficult. See, like we can have more guy friends. Yeah, you know expected. what I'm saying? It's okay. Yeah. But, but having a whore your girl friend as a female is kind of yeah. like... <sighs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yeah. She's just around dicks too much. Yeah. <laughs> just, I gotta be talking about yeah. dicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No dick talk. The, the, here's the thing, though, that's so funny to me. Dick talk. Y'all <laughs> act like women don't have these conversations. They you do. Act like, you act like 95% of my circle aren't women and I don't listen to them talk and just like how we talk. most of them talking talk. about oh, that oh, slut. Oh, for sure they do. For you know, sure they you do. You know how many times I am around my homegirls and I'm like, ew. Yeah. yeah like, they they, they say are right. way more shocking than Ugh, the things that right, we say. You, you, I'm what are you talking you, about? Right. Yeah. I know, but That's damn. right. We're good guys. We're sweethearts. We never we do are, the really are. <laughs> Please. Way better. Yeah. You're way better than the woman. That's right. why they love our senses of human. They love talking to us and they love getting these different, raw, honest opinions. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Even though that they're yeah, women, I don't know why we act like women aren't just like us. Yeah. They really know just different. like us. They ain't, they ain't no different. They're actually. a little different, man. There's a little different. They Somewhere. got 10 toes and 10 fingers, bro. They yeah. shit when they got it after they eat. They piss after they drink. What yeah. the fuck is different? The only difference between women and men is that women will complain when they get fondled by TSA agents. Wax <laughs> likes it. No, I don't like it. I just know I'm, I don't want to go into no fly zone, bro. Fuck no that. fly zone. No fly zone. <laughs> no fly zone. <laughs> no fly. I don't got a type. <laughs> no, I do. I don't my clothes are too it's tight. the only thing no. that I like. No, my, my clothes, clothes are, are too, too tight. tight. <laughs> I know what these TS agents like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get some Kanye clothes next time I go through TSA. Yeah, you got to be careful, Bag man. as hell. All right, man. I think we did it, guys. Yes, sir. Bless. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But 
If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.